Hi guys. Um, first of all, just wanted to apologise for the lack of uploads this week. Uh, I've been rather under the weather and I didn't think you'd want to hear me coughing and sniffling into the microphone trying to talk over a cold, so I've just taken a few days off from uh, making videos. Uh, starting off today with something, again, looking at more sort of detailed aspects of, of British kit, in this case British small kit, I'm going to be making videos of this nature to go with the sort of overviews of uniform similar to the Korean War, uh, 27 Brigade Korean War video I've already done. This then looks more in more detail at the sort of the small kit and this is being done uh, in anticipation of doing a video on early war British um, sort of kit uh, from uniform webbing and so on, similar to, as I've done with the Korean War video. So we're looking at an early war, late 30s, early 40s uh, British Army holdall. Now a lot of people call these um, wash rolls, the technical term is hold all because you don't just carry uh, wash kit items in, in them, uh, although that's primarily what they're for. Uh, this is set up basically to, to uh, display um, contents that would be typical of the early war period um, from what I can work out uh, and I'll explain what the various bits are and how, you know, they're not all uh, listed. Uh, the the um, uh, fitting instructions for the 37 pattern web equipment um, does mention certain content such as the laces and so on uh, but I will I'll go over um, obviously not everything's prescribed I'll go over what what the various items are and where the information regarding them being carried comes from um, so first of all I'll start with the items carried in the loops we'll go right to left just to, to keep it simple and talk about this pile of stuff over here in a minute first of all spare boot laces um, carried in this side of the, the hold all here um, there's two two laces in there, a pair for the uh, ammunition boots um, made of leather um, you can see the, the sort of the cross section there of them, square cross section spare leather laces for the, the ammo boots you then have um, toothpaste and a toothbrush which is a the toothpaste tube in this instance for reenacting purposes is a, a small um, tube of oil paint um, obviously picking up original toothpaste tubes from the period is not uh, well, it just doesn't, they don't really turn up, um, unfortunately. Uh, I, I would like to get an original Colgate um, tube at some point for doing displays when they're indoors and you're not so worried about stuff getting uh, damaged out and about. But this is ideal from the point of view of, you know, a good display item just to show it's about the size of, of a period toothpaste tube and the caps, the right sort of design as well. And then a reproduction bone handled uh, toothbrush, which is... Uh, you can pick these up I, I'm various places. I think they're available on eBay, uh, which is a, obviously an excellent item. Plastic wasn't really so much of a thing at the time, uh, and you were still seeing, you'd still see bone handled uh, toothbrushes being issued. Next to that, we have a aluminium, an aluminium metal comb. Uh, and again, later in the war, you tend to see plastic. Indeed, mid-war, you begin to see plastic a lot more. This is just something I use uh, for early war. Um, and say, you know, obviously, as the war went on, aluminium was a, a commodity, uh, a, a very much um, a necessary material for, for war production, and therefore the move over to plastic, not only the improvement in plastics, but that also uh, led to the move to plastics uh, to replace items like combs and things like this, as well as being used for toothbrushes. Um, we've got an early, uh, well, 30s, um, uh, what I believe to be a 30s uh, uh Safety razor, um, civilian made, um, private purchase basically. Uh, I believe the issue razors at the very start of the war were still the straight razor, which had been issued in uh, the Great War, as the cutthroat razor is, is colloquially known, um, or, or, or the slang term for it. And along with that we have uh, shaving soap in a, in a stick, which can be picked up. These can be picked up at any good chemist. You know, palm olives still make um, shaving sticks, and I've just wrapped that in fresh foil, plain foil. Uh, for again, just of display purpose, and it smells quite nice, and it makes uh, leaves the kit smelling quite nice. Spare razor blades, which are Gillette blue uh, blades, these can be again picked up all over the place, eBay, various uh, shows and things. You'll find these for sale. And a shaving brush. Now this is just a civilian. Um, this is a modern uh, copy, um, which is close to uh, examples I've seen from the time. It's got a plastic handle, which would originally probably have been um, an early form of plastic plastic or, or bakelite or something like that but it looks right for the period it's uh, included in the kit there then that's the little shaving kit there 
Along with that, you have a mirror, and this is a steel um, mirror in a little canvas wallet there. Obviously necessary for shaving, and again, these are still made today, so they're not hard to pick up. And you can you can find uh, originals with the wallets in various different designs, some in leather, some in canvas like this, and others also made in sort of a the same sort of material you find yellow cloth dusters made out of. So you, you could easily sew up your own little cover for one like that. Underneath the razor, we have a pair of uh, nail scissors, and these actually have a little nail file on the blade as well. And these are presumably of the period. I don't know a, a date for them, but they're they're correct for the period. And the reason I carry these is um, that uh, the if you look at the um, kit laid out by Fusilier Payne late in the war, 1944, he has a pair of folding nail scissors in his uh, hold all. And also there's a lot of accounts, uh, by inference, there's a lot of accounts from the First World War of chaps carrying nail scissors. Obviously your nails continue growing in the field and uh, it's going to get in the way if you can't uh, hygienically um, trim them. Biting them isn't a good idea because your hands are going to be, you know, not the cleanest sometimes. And uh, so, yeah, a pair of nail scissors are included by inference because they were carried later in the Second World War and also during the first. So it seems to make sense that you'd have a pair of those in your, your hold all. Certainly something I would add to the uh, issue equipment. Next, we've got a little uh, wadge of ISIL toilet paper. Um, again, if it's anything like the phony war period, early war uh, in the trenches in France, um, if it's anything like the Great War, there would have been newspaper and things around that were used too. Um, but this is obviously uh, proper toilet paper, sort of appropriate to the era. And then we have a block of soap. And this is sunlight soap, an original block of sunlight soap, which again, I've picked up at a show. Um, and again, that's, you know, soldiers were all, all uh, provided uh, with soap to keep themselves clean. You're expected to keep, to keep as clean as possible in the field, particularly your feet, wash your feet and so on. So little block of sunlight soap there. And I'll just show you the hole all itself at the hole here, remove the laces as well. I'm not sure if this is an original or a reproduction, uh, but it's made in a heavy canvas. And you can see the layout here. These were used from the Boer War, I believe, right the way through to the 1950s. Um, and you can see the loops here, which are for carrying the various items in. And the little pouch at the end here, which I originally believe was supposed to contain the Hussif, but uh, obviously other things were packed in there as well. Uh, and that was obviously on kit inspections and things like this, your cutlery would also be carried in the, the hold all, but uh, in the field, the cutlery tended to be carried outside of it. So I've not included it here as this is sort of a layout for um, a soldier in the field. Uh, but on kit inspection, you'd expect it to have your knife, fork and spoon laid out in here as well for inspection purposes. So there we are. I hope you found that interesting. And um, we'll have a look at some more detail kit and things like this. I'm hoping tomorrow to do another uh, look at um, to film. I'm not sure when I'll be uploading it, but I'm hoping to film another um, sort of one man's kit video, uh, which uh, provided the weather's kind enough. We'll see how that goes. So uh, anyway, for the for the moment, I hope you found that interesting. And until next time, bye for now. <laughs>